Welcome back. John Stuart Mill, the great English philosopher, economist, and social reformer, identified five specific strategies for discovering causes in his 1843 classic entitled A System of Logic. Here they are. The method of agreement, the method of difference, the joint method of agreement and difference, the method of residues, and the method of concomitant variation. The first strategy, the method of agreement, says that if in all cases where an effect occurs, there is a single prior factor, X, that is common to all those cases, then X is the cause of the effect. Here's an example that's often used. Suppose you and your friends dined at a restaurant, and several hours later, everyone felt really nauseated. Naturally, you begin to seek the cause, and you immediately suspect it's the food you've eaten. Was there one dish that stands out as the culprit? This table shows what your group consumed. Ellen ate everything, seafood, beef, salad, and chicken, and she got sick. Jack ate both seafood and chicken, but passed on the beef and salad. He also got sick. Allison had seafood and beef and declined salad and chicken. She got sick too. You ate the seafood and salad, but said no to the beef and chicken, yet you were no different. You too got sick. As you can see, everyone got sick, and the only thing that everyone consumed was seafood. By applying the rule of agreement, we can infer that seafood was very probably the cause of the illness. Let's use a variant of our first table to illustrate Mill's second approach, the method of difference. It says that where you have one situation that leads to an effect and another which does not, and the only difference is the presence of a single factor in the first situation, you can infer this factor as the cause of the effect. As you can see, nearly everybody ate everything with one exception. You didn't eat the chicken. They got sick. You did not. So it's clearly the differentiating factor. The chicken is very probably the cause of your friend's nausea. Mill's third method for a causal discovery, the joint method, applies both the method of agreement and the method of difference as represented by our table. As you can see, all those who consume beef got sick, and the only person who did not fall ill did not eat beef. And that's enough food for now. The method of residues also can be used to determine a probable cause. If a variety of causes have been established to produce a variety of effects, and we've matched up all the causes except one with all the effects except one, then the remaining effect can be attributed to the remaining cause. Here's an example. I know that a total of $100 has been donated to our local food pantry and that just four people contributed. Ed, Nora, Keisha, and Tom. Each of the first three each gave 20 bucks. There's a remaining $40 that needs to be accounted for and there's only one donor left who can be responsible. Tom is the residue, so he must be the donor. Mill's first four methods examine cause and effect in qualitative terms. An effect either occurs or does not occur. A probable cause either is present or is absent. However, in Mill's fifth method, the method of concomitant variation, quantitative considerations come into play since we associate a quantitative change in the effect with a quantitative change in the presumed cause. Here's an example. Suppose that various samples of soil, each containing both iron and uranium, were found to be radioactive. If the level of radioactivity varied in tandem with the level of uranium, one could attribute the radioactivity to the presence of uranium. An increase or decrease in one would always accompany an increase or decrease in the other. So one is probably the cause of the other. Before we move on, let me issue two caveats about Mill's methods. First, his methods presuppose that we already have a group of possible causes to consider. Second, his methods assume that causation is discrete, 
that is, separate and distinct. He does not consider the possibility of complex combinations of causation or causal chains. That said, Mill's methods have had a lasting impact on both the natural and social sciences and are well worth employing by critical thinkers. Next up, we'll take a look at a source of considerable philosophical concern, the confusion between correlation and causation. Until then, best wishes.